All right, so this happened in Antioch, California. Uh, it was around 2 a.m. I was at a friend's house, safe in warm, sheltered suburbia. We were having a lot to drink, chit-chatting, enjoying ourselves. And of course, you know, when you're having fun, time hits the fast-forward button. And those few minutes, they easily turn into an hour. I had way too much to drink. My friend has a bit of an abrupt bedtime, so I had to dodge out early, still intoxicated. I felt too shameful thinking, you know, I'd be asking too much to stay in his house and sleep off the drunkenness. Uh, and I suppose he was either too rude or too drunk to consider it himself. But whatever. Sometimes a little inconvenience makes you appreciate everything else. Just needed about another hour or so to sober up and drive back. For as fast as time passed during my stay, it decided to drastically slow down as soon as I stepped out of his house. It was a cul-de-sac area, a concrete jungle with the stem of the street breaking into a fork. Alongside the road, my car was parked, and uh, the only street light that worked was in the middle of the cul-de-sac circle, uh, about like 80 yards away or something. So I stumbled towards my car, I produced my keys, felt the metal lineup, opened my door and shifted to the back seat. And because this was a dark, strange and pretty unfamiliar neighborhood, I took the leftover newspapers and a sweater in my back seat to cover myself up. Because I, I was a little scared. And I wanted to camouflage myself and not just be some guy awkwardly sitting in his car waiting for time to pass in order to drive home, you know. I couldn't fall asleep. The uncomfortable feeling of a cheap backseat bed enshrouded in darkness didn't make the chance of slumber any easier. It felt ominous. And, of course, my mind began to wander. I thought of worst-case scenarios, like uh, the police shining their lights on me through the window, or uh, a drunk driver hitting my car, or... Wait. In the distance, about a hundred yards away, I could hear footsteps approaching. The gravel scuffed with each step forward, growing in proximity, but periodically taking stops. I wondered why until it made sense in my mind. Whoever it was, was probably looking through cars carefully with the intent to steal one. I couldn't recall how many cars were on the block, but I counted three full stops until he was at my window, breathing. I froze. There was no more than one foot between us. The car encapsulated me as I lay hidden beneath backseat clutter, forming myself into an object, trying my absolute hardest to be unnoticeable, unmoving, and simply not there. I see you said a 40-plus-year-old man in perverse baby talk. Imagine when you were playing hide-and-seek when you were younger. One of your friends tries to trick you into coming out. He said it in that tone, a voice, as if he was baiting me, you know, like he was questioning whether the clutter in the backseat was just clutter or a person. Now, I didn't want to move or check the window, so I remained clutter. Give me an Academy Award. My body reacted by minimizing my breathing so much that I felt 
paralyzed. I dared not look. My eyes fixated on the back of the passenger seat. I didn't blink. I didn't move. I didn't breathe. My heart was pounding so fucking hard that it shook my body with each throb. He circled around the car. My ears didn't fail me. I heard the steps. I almost felt like I was a part of the car. I could feel him touching the trunk as he carefully pressed down on it, as if to test the alarm, as if to test me. I was in the middle of fight or flight. I couldn't do either without elevating danger. I was frozen and hoping to God that he was bluffing. He circled the car again. The door handle to my right jiggled. I was pulling it multiple times. I see you. Same tone, but more agitated and stressed. More convinced that he was trying to make the clutter move, revealing itself to be of his expectations that it was me. My muscles tensed like a cow before slaughter. That had to be metal against glass. Take a penny right now and tap your window. Was it a, a crowbar, a knife, a rock, a gun? My eyes fixated on the seat in front of me, never averting my gaze, just like he was. I was covered enough to where I couldn't see beyond the seat in front of me. I know I couldn't see him, but I could feel his eyes resting on top of me. My name's Poker Face. What's your name? The voice changed in a lower, demented, and serious tone. My mind forced a visual, and it wasn't anything human. I already accepted my death. I was ready to be shot in the head, ready to take a life-changing bullet multiple knife wounds just make the sleep bearable not excruciating as you drain me of life I wouldn't know how to react my thoughts grew dim I imagined my friend waking up the next morning after a calm night of safe and sound sleep only to discover my mutilated defiled and bloody body hanging outside my car door and it was then I heard nothing but my own heart. What was this person doing now? Just staring at me in the middle of the night? Talking to me? Or a messy pile in the back seat? Time froze. The footsteps were being swallowed in the distance. Thank God he left. I waited another hour or so until the sun showed hints of itself. And then I jumped in my front seat and I bolted out of there wide-eyed and sober. Not only is this goddamn terrifying, but it's also superbly written. The breaks in the story were perfect. Why, thank you. I am an aspiring writer, actually. Well, do more than just aspire. 
I actually edit books for a living. And holy baby Jesus, this was far more entertaining and better written than 99% of the books I send off. Seriously, do the publishing industry a favor and get your stuff out there. Any chance you could open a door for me? <laughs> I would be lying if I said I wasn't somewhat serious. I would love to have you. <laughs> oh, kid. Ah. Uh.